Britain has some of the finest restaurants in the world. We were a culinary underdog for years, but now we're at the top of our game. So who's the very best? I asked you where you love to eat out, and you sent me over 12,000 nominations for this competition. But there can only be one winner. How do I find them? By choosing my two favorites every week and testing them to the absolute breaking point. Who will crack under the incredible pressure and who will come shining through? My nationwide restaurant competition is entering the home straight. So tonight, it's the last heat. So far, I found my best Italian restaurant, Casimir from Bristol. My top Indian, Prashad from Bradford. My favorite Chinese, Yu and Yu in Blackburn. For Thai, Nam Jim from St. Andrews. For British, the Milestone in Sheffield. Flying the flag for French, Winchingham Fields from Lincolnshire. And my best North African restaurant, Azu from West London. First, it's do or die with the last place in my semi-finals up for grabs from your favorite Spanish restaurants. Over the last couple of years, there's been a real growth in Spanish cooking in the UK. There's so much more to it than just paella. The Spaniards are hugely proud of their culinary heritage, but also great innovators. The best Spanish restaurants combine tradition and modern techniques to keep you coming back for more. I've handpicked two amazing Spanish restaurants from hundreds of nominations to battle it out. From the heart of the capital, it's Fino, the established pioneer of modern tapas in the UK. Are we the best Spanish restaurant in London? Yeah. There you go. They're locking horns with newcomer El Parata de Tapas in Notting Hill. Flying the flag for a whole new generation of Spanish cuisine. Vamos, 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 vamos. We always go that extra mile, not just me, everybody. Unas megas más. I'm going to push both the Spanish contenders to the very edge with three incredible challenges. First, it's every restaurant's worst nightmare. 30 ravenous customers will arrive and order all at the same time. Stop number one is Fino, a sleek and stylish tapas restaurant in central London. Opened seven years ago and it's owned by two brothers, Sam and Eddie. Now, the Hart Boys have really helped change and transform our perception on Spanish cooking. They have the most amazing female head chef downstairs who runs her kitchen with such military precision. My diners tonight are in for one hell of a treat. Good to see you, How are you? Nice are you to well? see you. Yes, very well. Gordon, this is Nieves Barragan. Hi. How are you? And Alicia. And is the team all female? Not all. <laughs> Not all. Yeah. The bosses are female. Yeah. That's enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> and, and the rest of them are terrified. I, I can <laughs> imagine. They, they don't put a finger out of place. Yeah, really. Surprise, surprise. Brothers Sam and Eddie have restaurants in their blood. Raised around their parents' missing starred restaurant and hotel. We grew up from a pretty tender age in restaurants the whole time. Literally from the moment we could hold a knife or pour wine at drinks parties and hand round the olives. In just seven years, the brothers have built their own empire of high-end London restaurants, renowned for their vibrant atmosphere and fantastic service. Fino's got an amazing energy. You can sit about 90 people at once, and they're all having three to four tapas each. You know, it's something like 700 dishes coming out of the kitchen, so there's a great buzz to the room. <laughs> Tough and talented head chef Nieves has been cooking exquisite classic tapas at Fino since it opened. Many of her dishes inspired by her Basque roots. I need one crispy anchovies. I need one octopus. For me, the most important thing is the taste. No more than three ingredients. That's what I like in the plate. That's perfection. We're actually quite a traditional Spanish restaurant. You know, we're not trying to break the mold. What we like to do is, is just source the best ingredients we can and cook them simply. So the secret is just to let that duck egg yolk ooze. It's delicious. I mean, who would have thought that peas and broad beans could be so exciting? That's one portion. Well, I suppose it's one tapas portion that's shared, isn't it? I, uh, I wouldn't share that with anybody. No. This woman is truly gifted. Thank you. Could her incredible passion take Fino all the way in this competition? My diner's are going to be arriving in just under five minutes from now. Neves, I can feel that adrenaline, yeah, from here. I can see it pulsating through those veins. You could probably do this standing on your head alone with no one in the kitchen. However, yeah, just, just do what you do best. And good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you.
They're going to need it, because in just a few minutes, we've got company. My 30 discerning diners will arrive and order en masse. So far, every restaurant in the competition has struggled with this challenge, and I fear even a slick operation like Fino is going to feel the heat. Okay, guys, in one minute, okay? The customers, they come in in one minute, yeah? Yes, sir. Hi there. Hello. Let, let me show you through. Okay, I want you to start to cut the bread, please. The customers are here. Neves is poised for action like a caged tiger. We'd like to talk you through the menu and, and explain what we've got on this evening. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the turbot's fantastic. Um, In the dining room, purveyors of charm, salmon eddy, are already breaking the ice. We've got a poached duck egg um, with fresh peas, broad beans, ham on and some fresh mint. The courgette flowers are stuffed with goat's cheese with a little bit of thyme and shallots and then dipped in tempura and deep fried. The brothers are clearly just as passionate about tonight's menu as their head chef. I need two in total, yeah? OK? I need two in total. Neves Basque roots are coming through loud and clear in the simple but exquisite seasonal delicacies of a quality rarely found outside Spain. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is really nice. Well, they look good. Yeah. The presentation looks fantastic. Mm. This is delicious. Absolutely fantastic. One of the best dishes I've actually ever had. Just over 45 minutes gone, and this place is absolutely rocking. Customers loving the food. Great atmosphere in there. But right over there on that hot plate, that's where the real Spanish fire is, because she is over everything. Every plate is immaculate. OK, guys, I need, yeah? One more roll of ayo, Alicia. Yes. One now, OK? Yes. One now. Neves is seasoning every dish, tasting every sauce. Alicia, two much olive oil in there, OK? Very tiny, very tiny, very tiny olive oil. Yeah. Like a true artist, she has complete command over every plate. You know what, you know what? This woman is a culinary Picasso. OK, start to play the potatoes now, yeah? Yes. OK, one turbo, two suckling pigs, one broad bean is table 14. Yes, sir. This part of the, of the cooking. Okay, Alicia. Does she normally do everything like this? No one's allowed to touch anything but her. <laughs> yes. you just pass everything to her and she does everything, yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, one gas pack to an addition, please. Yes. She's a control freak. She's worse than me. <laughs> uh, every night she's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really passionate about okay. my job, you she's know. Very really, really, really passionate. I can't fault Nervez's dedication, but I can see a problem. She's sending out dishes as soon as they're ready rather than ensuring everyone on the table is fed together. We were going to have uh, two starters between the four, so we wanted them both to arrive at the same time so we could get um, stuck in. Those seem to be arriving at present. Where's the squid? Have we asked Kitchen? Uh, no, because I see... No, 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 no. We, we have to ask this. Eddie's on it. But I've clocked another lady waiting for her turbot. Where's that last uh, main course there for the five ladies? They, uh... This sort of issue could ruin a whole table's dining experience, and Sam knows it. Is there a last course on table nine coming? I think that they should serve all the food together, and I didn't want my friend's food getting cold while I was waiting for mine, so... Yeah. A little bit miffed. I need one more turbo, Alicia. Yes. No, one. Yes. Don't make me two. Toma, loco. Toma. Neves is determined not to let a little slip-up like this ruin her service. Within minutes, two hot dishes are winging their way out to the dining room. Tarbot, there were 21, OK? There we go. Hey, let's go. Oh, sorry about that, madam. And just to make sure there's no hard feelings, Sam is on the charm offensive. Do you want me to show you how you fill it, the tarot? Do you know your way around more or less? Well, you do it. I'm very happy to do it. Yeah. Some people like to fiddle around and do it themselves. Others prefer it filleted. Thank you. Nicely done. Excellent. It's meaty, but it's a very light flavour. There's a lot of vinegar and olive oil that they put with it, as they do in Spain. Um, and it, but it, it doesn't overpower the fish. It's really, really lovely. Second course, Tarbo Sackling Peak. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. All the starters gone? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We're doing second course now. And in the plunge, I want to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Tarbot, OK? Eight Tarbot. As well as the delicious turbot, 
For the main course, Nervez is serving a speciality, roast suckling pig. Mouth-wateringly sweet and tender. It smells fucking amazing. It's another Spanish showstopper. The suckling pig's fantastic. Full of flavour, really well cooked. The simple potatoes that it, it comes on are really exquisite. It's delicious. Yep. The whole thing just melts in your mouth. And more importantly, it's got a really nice fragrant sort of wild thyme, bay leaf and rosemary underneath. This could well be the best food I've seen so far in this competition. The longer I'm here, the more excited I'm getting. How many more main courses have you got to go? That's it. That's it? Yeah. All gone? All gone. Service is almost over. But with the combination of delicious desserts and Samanetti's unfaltering charm, the dining room is still buzzing. Our mother um, grew up in Mallorca, but she's actually half Scottish, half Bulgarian. So we sort of look Spanish, but aren't at all. The fish was beautifully cooked. I had the turbo, I couldn't fault it, it was beautiful. The food was fantastic today, absolutely brilliant. Delivered on flavour, and I'm very, very impressed. Thank you very Good much. Night. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Right, um, OK. What can I pick on? What can I say that we have to improve on here? There was a moment in service tonight, service gets awkward, and that was just after the starters had gone. That's the only awkward moment I saw. The food's amazing. You can smile now. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, 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 you don't do it often, but you can now. Yeah. Yes? The service. Tonight, you two just raised the bar. Good job. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank you. Two amigas, another pig trotters. Next, has Fino's challenger pushed it too far with her experimental menu? Are you going to have it? Um, oh, why not for me? And will my secret diner make Nevers lose her cool? There's a hair in the salad. Damn. Oh, no. In my quest to find the best restaurant in Britain, my posse of hungry diners are riding into town. About to roll up at the second Spanish contender, fighting for the last place in the semi-final. The pioneering El Parata de Tapas, or the pirate in London's hip Notting Hill, is managed by Roberto, and the kitchen run by Madrid boy Omar. It's only been open for two years and already. It's got rave reviews. This young Spanish chef, he's only 26, and this guy really does have talent. Hola. How are you? Very well, and Good to see you. Very well indeed, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Small restaurant, small kitchen. Big passion. Big passion. Show that on every plate. Of course. Very well. Head chef Omar has a hugely impressive CV. Having worked for the celebrated molecular gastronome Baron Adrian of El Bulle in Spain, voted one of the best restaurants in the world. It was a tremendous experience for me that has influenced the rest of my cooking and the rest of my career. This young pretender has an ultra-modern approach to tapas and uses molecular cooking techniques to take Spanish cuisine into the 21st century with huge style. I like beautiful things in life, <laughs> as we all do. So I think it is great when you are sitting down in your table and something beautiful comes into it, even though you don't expect it. Omar's experimental methods can turn a traditional dish on its head like his jellied gazpacho. It's very clever, because you've got this nice chilled jelly. Tasting exactly the same, but a completely different texture. Yeah. In his mission to stand out, Omar bravely embraces daring ingredients like his confit coxcomb, the crest that comes from the head of the cockerel, which most British butchers throw away. They actually give it to us for free. Really? All the time. Because no one's ordering them? No. I don't think there's they... many chefs anywhere in the country that has free ingredients mm. that can be clever enough to charge money for it. Smart ass. Puedes pedirle a Joaquín que me emulsione el queso, por favor? No, era uno. This competition has just gone up a notch on the back of the Antonio Banderas are cooking. Little bastard. Far too good looking to be a chef. Vamos, 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 vamos. He has passion, guts, and a huge pair of cojones. Service! Omar will need balls of steel tonight. He's got just two hours to serve all 30 of my discerning diners and stake his claim to be the most avant-garde Spanish chef in Britain. OK, 
Okay, just under five minutes, my diners were here. 30 of them. Those dishes you cooked for me earlier were like little sort of miniature works of art. So make sure my diners have the exact same experience. Good luck. Let's do it. Thank you. We will put all our effort, all our knowledge, all our commitment to make this happen. I really want to win this. <laughs> Omar's definitely not playing it safe, with a pig's trotter Carpaccio and his coxcomb longestine Moloso, a type of Spanish risotto. I've got this image of this chicken's head just being ripped off. Is, is that what you ordered? Basically, cos clam is just the top of the, of the cloth. They're really tender, really, really amazing. With some able guidance from manager Roberto, the overtly avant-garde menu is creating quite a stir. It's a pig's trotter. <laughs> Why not for me? I really need to. Are you going to have it? I'm going to give it a try. There's no point in not. Okay, first check. Dos arroces, dos lentejas. With all 30 orders taken, can this young buccaneer seize this enormous challenge and lead his crew to a resounding success? Two migas, another pig trotters, unas manitas de cerdo. ¿Por qué está cayendo aceite? Service. This is complex food, and a lot could go wrong. But so far, Omar's as cool as a cucumber in his gazpacho. These plates are immaculate. I mean, we've just started service, and we're only half an hour into it, but composed, yeah, bloody good. Service. But the food looking absolutely spotless. But will his unorthodox dishes be too experimental for my diner's taste? Thank you, sir. Really the carpaccio of pig strotter. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. The texture takes a bit of getting used yeah, to, yeah, but the totally. flavours are incredible. I never thought I'd say I'd eat a pig strotter. <laughs> Customers are loving the food, and it's not exactly what they expected. Listen to the atmosphere. You know, anyone would think there's music playing in the background. The music are the customers. They're happy. Even the coxcomb Meloso is going down well. But each dish must be made to order and is putting pressure on the kitchen. The rice is popular tonight, no? Yeah, it's selling quite a lot. And the coxcomb, I think, challenge the customer yeah. sometimes, so... Well, it's a rare ingredient they very rarely see. The kitchen sends out the last coxcomb Meloso. That's edible, right? It is, yeah. <laughs> in there, in there. Excellent. Okay. It's really succulent, really tasty and really nice. Yeah. Go for it. That's nicer than I ever it. imagined it to be. Yeah, it, yeah it's fantastic. Cool. But Roberto fails to notice the happy diner's neighbour has yet to be fed. I think there's just been a, a small mix-up. My, my main course hasn't arrived yet. Customer's happy? Very happy. Yeah. How many tables you got left to go? Uh, this hurts. No more hot food? No more hot food. Really? Finally, Roberto spots the problem. Oh, shit. There's no way Omar can get this out quickly. Bit of butter. Everyone's already finished theirs. Sorry, Mark. It's all right. What happened? I did a mistake. Because of the rushing, everything came at once. But yeah, the most important thing is to do the food correctly, even though they need to wait a couple of minutes extra. It's fine. It's not until dessert starts to leave the kitchen that the delayed Moloso is sent. Was it worth the wait? Absolutely Good. worth the wait, but just a shame it took um, all you guys to all finish yours. But that's the only let down. It does, the food's fantastic. El Parata's near faultless performance has been down to Omar's sheer skill and passion. He's pulled off the remarkable, making humble and unappealing ingredients taste like a million dollars.
think this detail is a piece of art on a plate. It, it looks beautiful, it tastes beautiful. I think the food here is absolutely incredible. Some things that I never would have thought of eating, but actually worked really, really well. Tough challenge. My diners are over the moon. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Wait for the final. Yes? <laughs> yeah. You're already there, are you? We are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that confidence. It's almost like you've won the World Cup. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Excellent. Both Fino and El Parata thrived in my coach trip. They performed quite brilliantly. Now, I've invited them both to come and see me to review their performances. At least, that's what I've told them. What neither team realises is that they've already faced my second very revealing test. I asked my secret diners to visit their restaurants. I've seen exactly what each restaurant is like when they're not in the spotlight. First, I deployed Sarah Durden Robinson, a top food consultant, Armed with secret recording equipment, she never shirks in a mission to be a tricky customer. Could I swap two of those? Could I have the prawns instead and the burek? She scrutinised established heavyweight Fino. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Are you well? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. That was a big test, but unknown to yourselves. After I visited, I sent in a secret diner. And this is what they saw. You ready? My heart is beating. Your heart is beating. <laughs> what have I touched? Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Hello. I've touched something. I don't know what it is. My hand's covered in oil. Oh my god. I don't Excuse know what. Me. No, that's okay. I don't know where it's come from. Oh, it's the side of the table. Don't worry. It's just all here. It's got all oil on it, so I can see. Sorry, when I'm eating. Oh, brilliant, my first experience in the restaurant. They tidied it up very quickly, but as she was doing it, I noticed that my glass isn't clean either, so I'm also sending that back. That's not very good. At least it looks pretty. Oh, yeah, thank you. Actually, I know I've started badly. <laughs> it's not great, there was oil on the table, the glass was dirty, but she could not have handled it better. So, thank you. Bad start, dirty table. Not a good start. Dealt with amazingly. Bang, just like that. To have sherry, we were saying a, a manzanilla or a fino or an amontillado. What's the difference? With the between manzanilla and fino, there is not much difference. It's just the at the village they are very close, so yep. all of them they have this saltiness flavor. Yeah. We have one. We, they only sell it for two months a year, which is this one. Would it be possible maybe to try a little bit? Of course. Would you like to try this one? Yes, please. Um, and one of the manzanillas. One of the manzanillas. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to Thank you. Yeah. I've been to Jerez, which is the sherry capital of Spain. Gone through all the classes, all the tastings. But she actually managed to explain it very well in about three sentences. And <laughs> kind of thing, why didn't I just come here and speak to her? I would have had a sherry masterclass in seconds. So nice to get that level of excitement. An amazing insight and very knowledgeable. Nice touch. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. What? He was a bit slapped out and slopped on the table. Looked at himself in the mirror, didn't look at, at the table. Oh, wow, OK. So, we said potato? We No, Um, I think, yeah, I don't think we ordered that. Thank you. This guy trying to give my razor clams to the wrong table. He doesn't have a clue, but I wouldn't have him out here at all. My God, and it's not even my restaurant, but it pains me. Of course, we don't want that to happen. Definitely not. Anyone who comes into contact with 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 the customers needs to know what they know what they're talking about. Engaged. Next, Sarah's going to play one of the dirtiest tricks in the secret diner's book. Oh, oh no! putting one of her own hairs in the food. I was so, so, so pissed off. There's a hair in this salad. Oh, I just wondered yeah. if I could swap it. Thank you. No, that's OK, thank you. 
they've handled that really well. The waitress has taken it away. She showed it to the manager who had a good look at it. They looked at each other appalled and she's taken it straight back to the kitchen. Sorry about that. Mm. I don't know where it's from. It's not from the kitchen for sure because they don't have a show here. So, oh. I don't know. Anyway, I told the chef to make another one. Thank you. Another one. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Apologetic. Bang, straight away. Customer at ease. Dealt with brilliantly. Do you know what? Hasn't a great stuff. Dirty table, dirty glass. Then things started to happen. The food was fantastic. The waitress was absolutely amazing. How the fact that it was very What do you make of that? Anna, who's looking after them, did a great job. But I think sort of seeing the junior guy not up to speed is something that we can do something about and, you know, something that we, we ought to improve on, definitely. Tough test. We're only human and we need to make mistakes, clearly. But it's how you handle them. You know, we've got a couple of things to, you know, to take away and work on. Of course, we were disappointed it wasn't 100% perfect, but I think most of the team really do know what they're doing and, and you know it's a reasonably easy job for us to make sure that they all do you know, it's like a good challenge for us over the next few weeks. Our next uh, challenge is going to be tough and uh, we must to send everything perfect so I want to win nowadays and I will love to win and I hope we win. Next my undercover spy gets the cold shoulder from El Parata. That's Facebook. On the computer, checking out his mates, and still my secret diners without the wine. Renowned Spanish restaurant Fino okay, is locking horns with young pretenders El Parata de Tapas. Vamos, vamos, vamos. They're fighting for the last remaining place in my semi finals. El Parata's 26-year-old head chef Omar, sous chef Adrian, and front of house manager Ricardo put in a hugely impressive performance in my first test. But they're about to find out I've been spying on them. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, thank you so much for coming. Bye, chef. I have something to tell you. You've been tested twice. Because after I left, I then sent in my secret diners to make sure it wasn't a freak night. <laughs> and this is what happened. El Parata, here we go. Professional snooper Simon Davis makes his living spotting faults with restaurants, food and service. I told him not to hold back when he visited El Parata. Mm. It's lovely, actually, that cheese, that Babylon cheese is really... It's in your mouth and then just keeps going, just keeps, keeps delivering. Now, this will be a real telltale sign. This is octopus with paprika on and then capers. Very, very, very good. That's one of the best dishes I've had for some time, actually. They know what they're doing. Loves the food. Some of the most exciting food he's ever eaten. But what about the service? The waiter put the food down about 11 minutes ago. He hasn't come back at all, not once, to either see how we're getting on, engage us in conversation. It tells me he doesn't really care. But he's just walked by again, didn't say anything to us. I'm not feeling hugely welcome here as a customer at the moment. That may very well be because he doesn't like the cut of my gym. But I've been looking around the other tables and no one's really getting particularly good service. Good food is nothing without great service. They go hand in glove. Now, what have we got here? I think that's cod. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because they're not olives. They're raisins. There's no peppers. And there's no capers. It's a trade's description this year. It says, it says it's with capers and olives, but I see a small amount of sultanas. Uh, I think we don't, we don't change 
the menu. Oh, so you've changed the dish? Yeah. But it's the old dish on here. Yeah. I'm allergic to those. Do you want to I can't eat sultanas. Do you want me to take uh, away the on the plate or just this No, I can't. It's been on the, if it's been on the plate, I can't, I can't have it. Yeah, we were keen on that one. You can't just offer to take the sultanas off and bring back the plate. Also, bear in mind that now we've been chatting and looking at it and stuff, it's cold now. Cold on the menu. So with the capers and peppers arrives with raisins. What happened there? My fault. Not updating the menu. Not changing the menu? Just, uh, yeah. Just, I mean, uh, how uninterested was that waiter? He's like a zombie. Yeah, I feel quite ashamed when I've seen this sort of uh, attitude in the service. Guys, I've got a cool, hip, amazing restaurant there. You're sat on something potentially brilliant. And if someone wants to turn up to work and talk like that to customers, get in washing fucking dishes. I was gonna get a glass of, glass of red wine. Which would you advise? Come on, the menu, the menu one's quite nice. No, I'm gonna have this one, the Remy. Sure. Yep, thank you, just a glass. Mm. Where's my, where's my glass of red, red wine? That's Facebook. On the computer, checking out his mates, and still, my secret diner's without the wine. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I ordered a glass of red wine. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <sighs> So I, I hope I didn't interrupt you. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. What kind of impression does that serve to customers when a waiter's sat there on a computer? I think it just over 40 quid a head for the quality of the food and the, the ability of the chef. It's good value. Where it suddenly stops being good value is when you have service like the service that we've seen today. It is such a shame to see fantastic food let down by extremely poor service. All the hard work, uh, especially these guys pulling in the kitchen, gone just down the drain by bad attitude and just horrified. You've got every right to feel let down, but it's not over and done with. It's still very strong in this competition, and you need to bounce back. A lot to do. There was no problem with the food. It was a problem with the service, so I, I feel personally responsible for that. So yeah, I just feel, you know, that we fail. Disappointed. So we need to work together as a team and we will make sure this doesn't happen ever again. Both restaurants have been tested to their limits, but things are only going to get tougher. I'm taking the chefs out of their kitchens and pitting them against each other in my flagship restaurant. <gasps> I've challenged each chef to create one amazing dish for 20 guests. Really, really excited. One of the biggest days for me in my career. If we go forward now, it's going to be just a dream, you know, come true. It really means a lot for a chef to be here. I hope I can deliver on quality as this restaurant deserves. Let's do it, yeah? <laughs> but to win them, the last remaining place in the semi finals, it will have to be the finest dish of their lives. Big test. 20 guests only, one stunning dish. Make sure that every ounce of passion, excitement, knowledge and experience goes into that plate. And at the end of it, one restaurant is going through the semi-final, one is leaving the competition. Thank Off you. we go. Both restaurants will be going all out to win with a classic Spanish ingredient, pork. Favoured for its amazing versatility. Pork's a very tough meat to get right, and when it's overcooked, Nothing worse, dry. Outside, 
A dining room full of VIPs, all with a passion for Spanish food, will help me judge both dishes tonight, including renowned Spanish sommelier Bruno Murciano and the Spanish ambassador Don Carles Casajuana Epaulet. All the front of house teams can do is wait and hope. An order. El Parada. Four covers table five, four pig cheeks. Yes, chef. Thank you. After my secret diner's bombshell, Omar is putting everything on the line tonight with an incredibly complex dish. He's mixing the refined with the rustic. A rich pig's trotter, foie gras and ham on Wellington, served with a sweet fake puree, will sit alongside some of the cheapest cuts of the pig, slow braised tongue and cheeks. They are the ugly cuts of the pork. You need to be very skillful to make the best out of them. But uh, yeah, very confident. I've tasted all the food. I'm very happy with the flavors, the combination of them all together. So hopefully they won't like it. <laughs> so you really are going all out there. There's a lot going on there. A lot of going on. The combination, I think it is fantastic in the mouth. Seriously ambitious. I mean, there's like three dishes on that one plate. He's obsessed with being so quirky. I just hope the sort of balance of that dish comes together and it's not too weighted. On order four covers, table five, Fino. Right. Four pork cutlets. Yes, chef. Come on, guys, please. At least give me an answer. Look, yes, it's, not, yes, it's not complex. Yes, you know. In her own kitchen, Neves is a control freak, shouting orders left, right, and center. But today, she's like a different person. I want to hear that communication and a little bit of oomph, please. I hope her silence doesn't mean she's lost her nerve. On order four covers, table one, Fino. Four pork cutlets. Yes, chef. Good. Now it's sounding like a professional kitchen. Let's go, yeah? Today, Neves is sticking to her Basque roots, creating a simple dish packed with authentic flavors. Pork cutlets marinated in sweet paprika, accompanied by a silky smooth cauliflower puree and broad beans cooked with hamon. So you're playing to the strengths. You're keeping it exactly what you cook like in Fino. This simple, simple. Spanish, that's what I do. Four simple things on the plate, but tasting amazing together. That's what I hope. Is yeah? yeah, pork is lovely. Good. I hope I got the right one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. With Fino, I'm expecting magic. She's kept it simple. It has to be perfect. Every element on there. Four cutlets away. How long? Give me a time. Uh, I'm ready. Good. No, there's that looks fantastic. Love the colours. Huh? Vibrant, shouting summer. OK, look, again. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. You happy with those? Please. Table two, please. Go. Give me a go, guys, yeah? Food's looking amazing. It's incredible. They're just so focused on getting their dishes absolutely spot on. So focused. I mean, that's the most focused I've seen any chef in this competition. Neves is lavishing her complete attention on each dish, letting the ingredients speak for themselves. Neves? Yes, sir. Two pork away. Last table, please, yes? Fantastic. Go, olive oil. Happy? Yes, yep. please. Go, please. Table four. Thank you Good. very much. Very nice. Well done. Good job. Thank you. Table two. But will my diners be wowed or underwhelmed by the simplicity of her dish? Beautiful like colors. Little colors. Yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. combination. Very, very nice flavor. Sweet and Very good. Omar, how long for the first table, please? Three minutes. Three minutes. Great. Omar and Adriana are attempting to elevate the cheapest cuts of pork up to my Michelin standards. Can they really make a silk purse out of a sow's ear? When we come to the hot plate, come together so you've got a bit of you know, teamwork going on there, yeah? I don't want that food hanging around here too long. When it's cooked like that, I want it out, yes? To make sure all five elements reach the table piping hot and beautifully succulent, they must pull together. I, I asked second time to come and help him, so he did four yeah. plates. That's all, so he works as a team. I want to get involved, yeah? OK. Just about perfection, that's all. Come on, you've got to wipe all these little plates. I've got the ambassador of Spain out there, guys. Yeah, I want everything done. And that's the tongue there, yeah? Yes, the tongue. He's managed to impress my diners with his challenging ingredients once, but can Omar pull it off again? Good, go please, table one. Thank you. Thank you. Service, please. Sophisticated. Yes. The flavor, the textures. Actually, I had never tried the tongue before. Quite surprised. Really, really nice. Service is over. Okay, good. Well done. Water, water. Wow.
Before I taste both dishes, I'm keen to find out what my guests thought of them, starting with El Parata. Let's talk pork. The Wellington, the pork trotters and the... Yeah, pigs are the yes, yes, that was extraordinary. Both are very good, but El Pirata has been more creative in texture, in flavour. Sam? I've never had pig's trotter before. It's really absolutely good. delicious. I love pig's trotters, but I thought the sort of little wrap could have done with a bit more pig's trotter and a bit less pastry. But, you know, delicious, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're picking at straws. Yeah. Will El Parata be so generous about Fino's dish? Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. Talk to me about the pork chop. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I really enjoyed the combination of flavours was great. Mm -hmm. I think it was just uh, outstanding dish and it was really, really good. The Alfino dish was a very simple dish, done very, very well. Beautiful. I prefer the Fino dish. I think it's more simple, but at the end it was better for me. The other one, it was too much. Tonight, I've witnessed some of the most outstanding food in the competition from two remarkable chefs. We've tried our best. We've put a lot of passion and knowledge into our preparation and service went smooth. So I'm very happy, very pleased. I'm happy with my days. Oh, we love to win, yeah. Now I have the impossible task of choosing which of these two will go through to my semi-finals. My two Spanish contenders, Fino and El Parata de Tapas, have both attained near perfection at my flagship restaurant tonight. My diners were blown away by some of the best foods seen in the competition. Now I face a truly difficult decision. Which of these Spanish restaurants do I believe represents the future of Spanish cooking? Before I choose, I need to taste the food cooked here tonight. Both dishes look amazing. I mean, really vibrant and just ooze. Perfection. Fino's marinated pork chop. Four things on the plate. Delicious. I mean, really good. Got that nice, spicy, authentic Spanish taste. For a pork chop, it's fabulous. Cauliflower puree, a little bit grainy, but the combination of the resting juices and that chicken stock across the broad beans, really delicious. To get four ingredients on a plate, Tasting that amazing, that's a very confident, clever cook. El Parada looks amazing. Start off with the pork cheek and the tongue. Mm. That is phenomenal. Just melts in your mouth. One criticism, the fig puree. Very, very sweet. A little bit too much. The Wellington has got that robust, rustic flavor to the dish. Delicious. It's the cheapest cuts and they've made it taste like the most expensive. Two incredible Spanish restaurants. But only one can go through to the semi-final. OK. OK. First off, well done. An amazing job from both restaurants. I invite you here today to really create something that is off the charts. Now there's, you play to your strengths. Four things on the plate, very bold. The pork was stunning. Cooked beautifully. Hamon, broad beans, it was delicious. What could I criticize there? You make a cauliflower puree. I found it a slight touch too grainy. Omar, I asked for fireworks, you create an explosion. I asked you to use pork, and the only thing you didn't use were the toenails of the trotter. Pork cheek, beautifully braised, tongue brave. And then you do a Wellington. Pig's trotter wrapped in pastry. I've never seen that. How could I criticize that dish? The puree is very sweet. You put sweet and rich together. It needs acidity, just something to bang, to lift and separate that. I put the two dishes together and looked at them and I thought, jeez, where'd you start? There was a fraction in it. It's been an amazing journey and it's been packed with highs and lows. The winner of the Spanish category, for me, is the restaurant that I want to revisit. Is it for the fireworks from the Parata or is it the warmth and the skill from Fino? 
the closest thought contest. The restaurant going through to the semi-final, based on everything I've experienced, seen, tasted, is... Fino, congratulations. Absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Simplicity at its best, wonderful. Congratulations. Really well done. Good job. Omar, we haven't seen the last of you. You have the most amazing excitement with your level of creativity. Well done. Thank you. It's a shame. You know, a good restaurant needs to be consistently good. And we haven't, in a way. But, uh, yeah, we will get it right. It's a great thing for, for the team, for the restaurant, for me. Especially for me, it's, um, it's kind of, can't even speak, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. What an extraordinary day. So sorry to see El Parata leave the competition, but so happy for Fino to get to the semi-finals. And now, the real battle begins.